Main casting, I think that one way teachers can use it really well is by using it with interactive whiteboards. Um, if you have an interactive whiteboard in your classroom, if you don't, um, you can actually build one for only $55. I wrote a blog about that a while back, a Wiimote whiteboard. Um, I used to use it with my Promethean Active Board. You can use it with smart boards as well. If you don't have a board, um, you can still download this program here. It's called Active Inspire, um, and it's actually free to download, and you can use it on any whiteboard, or if you don't have a, uh, an interactive whiteboard, you can just use it on your computers and have kids use it and create really great screencasts using it. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by that. Now, um, I used to, like I said, hook it up with my interactive whiteboard, and I would have students um, write their math strategies on the board and record using Jing as they explain their strategies, um, which was great because then we could go back and play them and talk to them if they were um, making mistakes or use those recordings to help train other um, or teach other students in the class about different uh, mathematical strategies. Um, unfortunately, my computer crashed, so I lost all those great screencasts. I should have put them online earlier. Um, but here's kind of an example of what one of those might look like. So here's with Active Inspire, again, a free program that you can get from PrometheanPlanet.com. Um, I would put something like this on the board. We would do mental math pretty much every day in my class. So solve this problem in your head, and students would sit on the floor, and they'd have maybe two minutes to think about the problem without speaking. And then I would call a couple of them up to the board to explain their strategies. And as they did, I would record with Jing. And usually it looked something like this. Um, they would come up and probably choose a different color because, you know, they're kids. And that's something that's fun for them, and it only takes a couple seconds, so I didn't mind it. And then they would go ahead and start explaining. So they would say something like, um, well, when I looked at 34 plus 27, I knew that 34 is the same as a 30 and a 4. So in my head, I split up the 34 into 30 plus 4. And then I knew that 27 was the same as 20 plus 7. So in my head, I split up the 27 into 20 plus 7. Then it got really easy for me because I know how to add 10s in my head. So I know when I'm looking at the 10s that 30 and two more 10s is the same as 50. And then I looked at the 1s. And I looked at the 4 and the 7. So I added 4 plus 7 in my head. And for me, it was easiest to split up the 4 into a 3 and a 1. Because I know that 7 plus 3 is 10, and then one more means it's 11. So I know that 4 plus 7 equals 11. So the last step in my strategy was to look at the 10s plus the 1s. So I had 50 plus 11. And 50 plus 10 is 60, and 0 plus 1 is 1, so the total is 61. And that's how I figured out mentally that 34 plus 27 equals 61.